Hello and welcome to a very special episode of ClutchCast. I'm Matt Schroyer and I'm here with my project car, the BMW Z3 Roadster. This actually is the final episode in a three-part series on overhauling the front subframe assembly on the Z3 Roadster, which is pretty similar to the E36 3 Series. In this episode, I'll be dropping the oil pan and inspecting the oil pump nut. Now I'll tell you why that is in a moment, but up front, the reason why this is part of a front subframe refresh series is because you really do need to drop that front subframe to get out the oil pan. You may have heard that it's possible to drop that oil pan without dropping the front subframe and that may be true but it is a lot of work and I do not recommend that. The last two videos in the series covered dropping the front subframe and reinstalling the front subframe so please refer to those if you need to. Now with all that out of the way why would you check the oil pump nut in the first place? Now if you've been to the same forums that I have you may have noticed uh, several threads about loose oil pump nuts on the M52 and M54 engines and even some oil pump failures. Now there are a couple possible reasons for this one being that the chain driving the oil pump sprocket on the M52 and M54 engines do not have tensioners so they may be liable to lash around at high rpms another possible reason for the loosening of the oil pump nut might actually be the engine harmonics generated at a high rpm but whatever the reason may be the end result is the same the oil pump nut becoming loose falling off the oil pump, and causing all sorts of nasty things to happen. A common bit of preventative maintenance is to replace the oil pump nut with one that has been drilled to accept a safety wire and tying that off on the oil pump sprocket. Now this may not be a cure-all, but it should give you some peace of mind and potentially help prevent a bad situation from becoming a catastrophic one. Now would I recommend that you drop the oil pan to add a safety wire to that oil pump nut. If you have a BMW Z3 with this aluminum 2.5 liter inline six or the 2.8 liter inline six, I would actually not recommend this procedure. And that's for two important reasons. Number one, the oil pump nut issue typically only comes up on M52 and M54 engines with a displacement of three liters or greater. And sometimes that also happens on the S52 and S54 M engines. And this is probably due to the harmonics being generated by the longer strokes in those engines. Reason number two, your steel oil pan bolts holding that oil pan to the block might actually be fused to the threads inside of that aluminum block motor thanks to galvanic corrosion. And that means it is possible to break a number of these bolts in the process of unfastening them. And repairing those threads can be time consuming, if not outright risky, given how important they are to sealing oil inside of the engine. So with that disclaimer being said, let's go ahead and break off some oil pan bolts inside of this unmolested M52 engine. First thing I did was remove the plug to the oil level sensor and just let that sensor in place. Next, I removed the bolts attaching the oil pan to the bell housing and engine block. I found this to be especially treacherous given that the oil pan and engine block are aluminum and the bolts are steel, which over time leads to galvanic corrosion, fusing the steel bolt threads inside of the aluminum. My advice here is to start at the back and make your way forward, moving side to side in the process. Use lots of penetrating oil and preferably let it soak overnight. Take your time and apply more penetrating oil if you meet resistance. Unfortunately, even after being super careful, I still lost three bolts in the process. The power steering pump needs to be moved slightly to make room for the pan to drop. So next, I release the tensioner enough to slip off the drive belt and then loosen the bolts to the power steering pump, but did not take them all the way out or remove the power steering pump itself. 
The sway bar was also in the way, so I had to unbolt that. Finally, with enough room to remove the pan, I put a transmission jack beneath the oil pan to catch it from falling on me and remove the pan with the sway bar at the same time. Now that the pan was off, my immediate concern was extracting the broken oil pan bolts or drilling them out and repairing them. My first attempt was to extract each bolt by first drilling a small hole in the broken bolt and tapping in a reverse threaded bolt extractor. But truth be told, I've never been able to get a screw or bolt extractor to work, and this was no exception. The bolt simply had too much corrosion from being in contact with aluminum for 20 years. With my extraction attempts failed, I resigned myself to having to drill out the bolt and installing a new thread using a thread repair kit, also known as a helicoil. Now this is a nerve-wracking process because these are the threads essentially keeping the oil system contained, and you don't want to screw up and have to take the engine out. It's also quite exhaustive because it does take a lot of time and effort to drill through those hardened bolts, especially when you have to hold the drill up from underneath the car. But all is possible with enough time and fresh drill bits. Right, so here we are at the front of the engine, and this is a major reason why I went through all this trouble to remove the oil pan. This is the oil pump, you can see the, the chain that drives it, and uh, also the oil pump nut. Now, the forum lore is that this oil pump nut uh, can come loose and uh, cause a whole bunch of problems. You know, loss of oil pressure, metal clinging around in your oil pan, etc, etc. Not good times. But uh, some of this forum lore also suggests that this really doesn't happen on the 2.5 liters or even 2.8 liter M52 engines that uh, normally when you find loose nuts here it's usually on the 3 liter and up. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I've got a, uh, a replacement nut here. You don't necessarily need to replace them but this one's special. It's got a, uh, a hole in it. This is from Turner Motorsports and there it is. You can see where they've drilled out a hole in this nut where you can thread safety wire through. You then thread the safety wire through one of the holes and twist it off tight to apply a constant tension in the correct direction so that uh, this nut doesn't come loose. I can tell you that it is uh, at least on finger tight, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my handy dandy uh, torque wrench and try to get an idea of how thoroughly that is torqued on. The stock torque spec for this nut is uh, 17 foot-pounds and you use a 17 millimeter socket. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do and we'll see what the results are. All right, got my torque wrench here and uh, right now the setting is about 12, 12 foot-pounds, right? And uh, I've got it on righty-tighty because this nut is actually uh, reverse threaded. So right to loosen and left to tighten. So let's check this out, see what happens. 12 foot-pounds. Oh yeah, it's clicking, so definitely more than 12 foot-pounds. Question is, how many more? Try 14. Not super scientific again, but it gives us a ballpark figure. Another click. So that is 14 foot-pounds. Let's try 16. Oh, about 16, about 17. It clicked before it loosened, so that is right around 17. So that is pretty much factory spec right there. No loosening happening on this. So, yeah, it appears that this is fully factory spec, which uh, confirms my suspicion that the issue has more to do with the 3 liter and 3.2 liter variants of this motor and not the smaller displacement 
motors. Notice that when I took it off, the markings were on the outside, and the inside facing the oil pump is, is just clean. There's no, there's no markings on this. Again, this is reverse threaded. Don't go threading this the normal fashion. Okay, the old nut is off. Got a new nut. All right, we got the new nut. Remember, uh, printed side out and flat side into the oil pump. Gonna put some thread locker on it. Some thread locker here, red, which means that it will not come off without some kind of uh, direct application of intense heat. Typically a flame of some kind. Apply it to the threads, because it is thread locker and not nut locker. Clean it up a little bit. Doing this to get a nice clean bond. Here. A little blob at the top. Should do it. There we go. That's plenty. Just need a little bit. Attach the nut. Remember, left to tighten this one. Very careful as you thread. This is a lot more delicate than it might first appear. I've heard people applying way too much torque to this and damaging the threads and not having a great time. All right, there's that. Get the torque wrench back out. Uh, let's see what we need. We need 17 foot-pounds. 15, 16, 17. Now, okay, so this is, this is an important step. I should stop to talk to you about this. So, if you're attacking this with a torque wrench like you should, make sure that the torque wrench is going to measure the torque on either clockwise or counterclockwise settings. Not all torque wrenches will measure the torque on both settings. How do you know whether your torque wrench is going to work for this job? Will you try this out on a nut somewhere else on the body? Use a very low torque setting on the... Uh, clockwise setting, sorry, the counterclockwise setting, and then you'll find whether it actually measures anything in the clockwise or the counterclockwise setting. Uh, just make sure that your torque wrench works both ways. If you're not sure, test it out. That's all I want to say about that. So here we go. Very careful here. There it goes, click. See that? That's what you want. It's clicking. That's good. Perfecto. Last step is to take care of the uh, safety wire. So let me get that started here. Okay, so there you have it, a safety wire on the oil pump nut here. This is obviously not an excellent safety wire example, but uh, this is gonna get the job done, right? So this isn't gonna slip loose. It's nice and tight. It might be a little bit pointy, you know, a, a better job probably would have had this uh, tucked away a little bit better. But uh, for my purposes here, I think this is gonna be fine. Again, when I check the torque on this nut, it seemed to have the factory torque specs, right? It took about 17 foot-pounds to break this loose, so I tightened it back to 17 foot-pounds, uh, put some red thread locker on there, and now I got the safety wire. So I think we're ready to uh, spin this up to red line for a while. Time to move on to replacing the oil pan, so let's get to it. Now the Bentley service manual and the BMW TIS calls for applying three bond 1209 known to the germans as dry bond to the joints for the end cover and front timing case cover however three bond is very hard to come by and absurdly expensive if you do find it a good alternative is permatex 85 420 which is a blue non-hardening sealant comparable to hylomer now before applying the sealant to the joints 
I thoroughly cleaned the gasket surface to remove any corrosion and any bits of the previous gasket that had been left behind. This is an aluminum surface, so you only want to use nylon brushes to clean with, or you risk damaging the oil pan seal. In each of the corners, I applied a 3mm wide bead of Permatex 85420 and waited about 20 minutes for its solvent to evaporate. With the oil pan gasket surface prepped and ready for a new gasket, it was time to move on to installing the oil pan itself. The transmission jack again came in handy here and provided a third hand to lift the pan as I put a few bolts in to secure everything in place. This was really hard to do because the new gasket liked to slide around a lot, but eventually I got it all in place. Working from the front of the engine to the back and alternating from side to side, I put in the remaining bolts and threaded them down. And then finally when all bolts were threaded in place, I went from front to back again and torqued them down to the required 7 foot-pounds for the 8.8 .8 grade bolts and down to 9 foot-pounds for the 10.9 grade bolts that pass through the transmission bell housing. With the oil pan installed, it was now time to reinstall the dipstick guide tube with a fresh o-ring. This job was a lot harder than I thought it would be due to the tight tolerances needed to keep oil from leaking out from between the guide tube and the oil pan. First went the o-ring onto the guide tube with a liberal application of silicone spray. Then I proceeded to tap the guide tube with the o-ring installed down into the oil pan with a large rubber mallet. However, it was really quite hard to prevent the o-ring from binding up on the oil pan, so periodically I had to push it down into place evenly with a long, narrow screwdriver. Now you won't hear a satisfying click or pop when it's all in place, but you will notice that the dipstick guide tube mount is now perfectly aligned with its mount on the side of the engine block. The next step in the process was to put a fresh gasket on the old oil level warning switch. It was interesting to note that BMW had changed the color of the gasket from a sort of pale, clearish silicone-like color to a nice, satisfying shade of orange. I then thoroughly cleaned the studs on the underside of the oil pan and applied some copper anti-seize and in went the switch. Since the power steering pump had to be loosened and the drive belt had to be removed to make room for the pan to drop, both these had to be returned to their rightful places. as far as the oil pump nut and oil pan are concerned. As I said earlier, I do have a video where I cover reinstalling that front subframe and giving everything aligned, so please refer to those videos if you need to. Other than that, I would like to thank you for joining me, and we'll see you down the road.